Um, welcome, everybody. Um, my name is Brian Comerford with the Leaving Soot Applied National Association, and beside me is Tom Rogers. Um, so, do we're going to kick things off with with this um, award ceremony, the the Virgil Quinn Award ceremony, and we're going to start with our keynote speaker, Rory O'Connor. Um, Rory O'Connor is an author, a podcaster, and a past student of Leaving Soot Applied. Rory O'Connor is a stand-up comedian and a master mind behind the phenomenally successful. Rory's Stories, one of the biggest social media pages in the country. Rory is a best-selling author, a prominent, spokesperson, a prominent spokesperson for mental health and ambassador for a cycle against suicide. Rory is a past student and advocate of the Leaving Soot Applied program. And he's going to talk to us for about um, 30 minutes um, about everything about himself. All right. So thank you, Rory. I'll try and make you onto the big screen now. I'll give you prominence. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah, no problem at all. Um, Thanks very much um, for, for having me. Um, yeah, listen, uh, obviously we'd like to do this in a, in a proper uh, big ceremony, but obviously we're still doing the online, unfortunately, with, with COVID. But we're definitely, I suppose, head, heading in the right direction. So, uh, yeah, so just to introduce myself, uh, Rory O'Connor is my name. Uh, probably better known to a few years as uh, Rory Stories from social media. So, so I do the sketches um, on YouTube and Instagram, uh, Facebook, etc. So I'm I'm full time with say uh, self employed with Rory Stories since 2016 and I'm definitely really happy with where where things are at with myself at the minute you know um yeah I suppose living the dream is is probably something I, I, you know I suppose it's a cliche that's said but I, I definitely feel like I am like I'm really uh, I'm really happy with what I do um I feel that I am doing what I was put here to do as in like this is the talent I've been given which. Unfortunately, uh, which I get into, school wasn't able to really do that for me because of the the, the education system and, and the way it, it just doesn't fit certain people, which I'm sure plenty can relate to that. Um, but it, it obviously wasn't all great for me up until 2013. I would have struggled myself with uh, a gambling addiction, etc. And my mental health as well, which I still uh, go up and down with, but it's something that I'm managing all the time. But I suppose for me, like... Um, I, I'm really proud that I done LCA, you know, it's something for me that uh, I think it kind of made me who I am because, as you know, there's a little bit more uh, freedom in the classroom compared to the rest of the Leaving Cert, you're allowed to be, be yourself a bit more, the teachers are, the teachers treat you a bit more like an adult than they would, I suppose, a, a normal Leaving Cert, and it certainly was the case for me, like, because I suppose to bring you back to when I went to school, I, I started uh, primary school in the 90s, and I struggled in primary school from a young age. So like the teacher will be writing on the blackboard and I'd be, I'd be struggling to keep up with the teacher. And she'd often say, has everyone got this so I can rub it off and start again? But I, I'd never be anywhere near where the teacher was on the blackboard. And I just found it easier to distract others and, and, and get kicked out of class like, because I wasn't willing to put my hand in the air and say, teacher, do you, mind, do, you, do you mind slowing down? Because I didn't want everyone else in the class to think that I was stupid. And... Um, because education, as you know, um, especially back when I was there, it's very black and white. Like if you're not good at spelling or maths, you're, you're just stupid. Like that's the way it kind of is portrayed, certainly when I was in school. And I just accepted from a young age that I was stupid. And I, you know, I became the kind of mess in the classroom. And, and you know, I spent a lot of my time kicked out of class in primary school. And looking back, it definitely has it had an effect on my confidence, you know, because whenever I, I'd hit a scenario in life where I, where something was tough, I'd just be like, oh, well, I can't do this because this is what I was told in, in primary school. So I went on to secondary school and I'd done the junior cert. And then I didn't really want to continue on in school. I wanted to leave. Um, but my mom was like, oh, I'll just do something. So so the LCA w w was the option. Um, and yeah, listen, there was a stigma around it, you know, oh, look at these kind of losers, can't add and let's count apples. And but like, it's funny. And again, at the time, I believed that. But looking back now, it's just different individuals who are talented at different things. And and, and that's what's great about the LCA course, as you know, like you, you, you kind of have a bit of bit more of an idea what you're good at and what you're not good at when you head into the real world that, that you wouldn't be given in the normal even say, you know, the way I know we do done metal work. Uh, and like you were obviously doing PE and, and uh, you know, science, uh, which <laughs> certainly wasn't wasn't uh, enjoyable for me but there was different subjects that we done and you got the opportunity to go and do work experience now again 
I'm not sure with the COVID, obviously, it might be different for you as all, unfortunately, with your work experience. But for me, it was great. I got to go and do something like, and then walk away going, well, I definitely don't want to do that when I'm older or whatever. And you might have some idea what you're doing. So I had a great time. Like I, I, I had a couple of uh, very good kind of uh, teachers in school, like uh, Caroline Matthews from Ashwood Community School was my uh, kind of... Uh, uh, tutor I suppose what it's called and she was great for letting us be ourselves and even for me personally like she knew the character I was and she'd often say for me to tell a few stories and sing a few songs like, on a Friday afternoon which wouldn't be you know a normal uh, school that wouldn't go down but looking back at it like what I do now that was kind of my apprenticeship like I was I was getting used to kind of public speaking I was getting used to to you know to not really care and what people taught me I just tell a story and if they laughed happy days if they didn't want about it and same with the singing etc so that's the importance of certain teachers like you know um, and and that is my kind of advice to the LCA coordinators that might be listening how important it is to just like understand that these people are different and, and, and they have different talents and like so I left school then in 2005 and you know I didn't know what to do with myself and I went to Clash to Eden Finglas and I done a, a PLC course in, in sports management. And as much as I enjoyed the, the physical end of things, like I remember anatomy and physiology, for instance, like and automatically I'd have that voice in the back of my head going, Rory, what are you doing here? That voice that became very strong from primary school, basically saying, This is not your game. And and I quit then after a few months, and then I got myself a trade as an electrician just to keep my father happy. But sure, I couldn't be an electrician on a month of Sundays with these big Mars bar fingers on me. Trying to wire a bit of cable was very difficult to me. And again, that's only the practical end of things. So I couldn't even spell electrician on my FOSS forms. I had to turn to a fellow and ask him to spell electrician for me. So what hope would I... But I gave it a lash and I went to FOSS, but lads were wiring like cookers and immersions, and, and I didn't know one bit of cable to the next. And... Again, unfortunately, that voice will be in my ear going, Jesus, you, you really are useless and stupid. But I'd never let on, like, because I was that outgoing type of a fella that was, you know, well able to kind of make a joke of a lot of scenarios. But deep down, the conference just wasn't there. And I remember I went back to my manager after FOSS and he said to me, he says, uh, Rory, how did you get on? And I said, oh, yeah, a bit of crack. And he said, well, there was eight modules, Rory, and you passed one. And he said, we've never had an uh, electrician only ever pass one. What the hell are you doing in there? And I looked at Mick and I said, to be honest with you, Mick, I'm delighted I passed the warden. Yeah, Jesus Christ. I, I, uh, geez, I'm, if you don't mind me asking, Mick, which one was that? Because as far as I was concerned, everything was hard. And he says, Rory, it was your attendance. I said, oh, all right, fair enough. You know, you show up and you get paid. So so what they do? And he said to me, I think you're a good skin, but I don't want to see you on Monday morning. So I was like, just so we're on the same page here, does that mean I'm sacked to ghost? That's exactly what it means. I was like, oh, my God. So I went back then to the parents and again, like, Jesus, Rory, what are we going to do with you? And you were no good in school and now you're no good on a building site. And that's kind of the way the culture was in Ireland. Like there was no one like, no one really sits down and says like, well, what are you good at? Like, and for me, it was making people laugh and just, you know, being a bit of a character. But like, I would have never thought that that was possible to do because in Ireland, it's kind of like, you know, the way we were all read is like, you know, you, you, you go to school, uh, you get a good leave insert, you go to college, you get a degree, you get a good pensionable job, you get a mortgage all in line. And then at some stage you die. That's how you live your life. And it's like, no, uh, I don't believe that that's the case. And for me, like I, 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 because of my my uh, lack of confidence, I got into uh, a gambling addiction uh, when I, I started about 16 years of age and it kind of kept going and going and I kind of kept turning to gambling to make myself feel better because um, I was in an office job where it was uh, minimum wage. I was about maybe 23, 24 years of age and I remember being in this call centre job and, and kind of saying to myself that Rory, like the teachers were right about you in primary school, you have amounted to nothing, like you know, here you are, you're in your mid-twenties, you've no leaving sir, you've no college degree, you've no apprenticeship, you actually are useless and I began to kind of uh, believe this in my head and that's where the real kind of, you know, depression and mental health issues were developing and again I was turning to gambling to make myself feel better. But I would have a very addictive personality. So if I like something like one 100 mile an hour, and if I don't forget about it, like, and I kind of believe it stems from a young age. So I'm an asthmatic myself and I became very addicted to my inhaler. And even now, like I kind of panic if I didn't have an inhaler nearby. So when you're that kind of full on attitude, gambling is not something you want to be getting into. So 
I struggled with gambling uh, for my late teens, early 20s until 2013 came along is where I hit rock bottom myself. And how it came about is the club who I who I love playing for were, were knocked out of, the, out of the county championship. And that kind of meant everything to me at the time. And the next day, I just went drinking in Dublin. I turned off my phone and I didn't care about my girlfriend, my, my one-year-old child who was, at, who was at home. It was just a man really running away from his problems. And that night we were in a nightclub and I didn't want to be there. I wanted to go back to this casino and gamble because that's the problem with addiction is you kind of never know when you're bet. And I lied to my friends. I went back to this casino. I took out my last couple of hundred euro and I, I lost it on the roulette. Uh, machine and uh, and I remember leaving the uh, casino that night and I hadn't literally a penny in my pocket I hadn't a penny in my bank and like it was unreal the, the severe I suppose uh, uh, depression and, and negative thoughts in my head like so if you can imagine like like happiness is in the palm of my hand there just picture like say a, a, a euro coin and this is how I felt in my mind that each finger was like a, a negative thoughts it was like you're stupid. You've always been stupid. You're a gambler. You're a bad father. You've nothing going for you. Like you're, you're, you're just useless. And and I believe this. And and I've no problem saying suicide was very strong in my head that night because I felt that I was just you know just no good at anything. Like and but thankfully two things came into my head that night. One was when I was a young fella. Um, my cousin took his life completely out of blue. He was only twenty three, and I remember very well. And um. Uh, you know, I kind of remember the ripple effect and I kind of swore that this can't happen because I seen how devastated his parents were. And then uh, I was also at, at a funeral of a man called Shane McInerney from Nobron County Mead who took his life by suicide uh, in 2012. And I was down at the funeral and it, it was a very sad occasion, obviously, but his brother said something very powerful in the church, Jerry. Um, he, he basically said that whoever is struggling to please ask for help and don't have your family going through what we're currently going through. And, that resonated with me that night and I took out my phone and I rang my, my uh, girlfriend and I was very upset. There was tears and because I didn't want to die, like that's the reality of the matter. But because I felt that I was just, I, I was so useless in my mind, this was telling me that, that there was no other way out, but I wanted help. And my my, my father told me that there would, would be help for me and I got help and it came in a man called Jerry Cooney from the Rutland Centre, which is an addiction counselling uh Centre, which is unfortunately round at the minute because of COVID, because people who struggle with addiction, um, you know, the routine is gone. Like if you're if you're a recovering addict, what do you need in your life? You need routine. You need a daily routine to keep your mind straight. And what's the worst thing that could happen to that is COVID. Get into your house and stay there for the next God knows many weeks and, and only stay within your 5K. So they're unfortunately struggling. But I met Jerry anyway and he gave me the best bit of advice ever. He spoke about addiction from a negative and a positive platform. So negative is obviously gambling, drugs, alcohol, um, anything that makes you feel really good really quickly, but can bring you back down to earth just as quick. Now, listen, uh, I'm very much with it at the minute, and I, I know myself that cocaine is a big issue among young people at the minute, uh, gambling, uh, alcohol. And listen, my, my, my honest advice on that is you just need to be very wary of these things because if you have that attitude like I have, you're going to get uh, sucked into this environment and nothing good is going to come out of it. Uh, I know you might think you know everything now and I thought I did when I was 17 or 18, but trust me, you need to just understand that that these are dangerous, uh, 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 I suppose, stuff to get into pretty much. And and that for me like was an issue that I kept turning to the negative platform, which was the gambling, which was the alcohol, you know, and um, but then Jerry mentioned about this positive platform. He said that some of the most successful people live in this platform, you know, the Denzel Washingtons, the Oprah Winfrey's, the, the Katie Taylors, people who are obsessed with what they do um, because they channel all their energy into that. And he said to me, you need to find something that you're interested in uh, and you have a passion for it. And I went away and I genuinely said, well, I've always wanted to get into acting and comedy. It's something that I've always been passionate about. Um, like looking back on my life, like if there was one thing I could do was make people laugh, uh, just the character it was, you could tell me to go into a room there, no matter who was there, and, and I'd, I'd start cracking jokes. That that was that came easy to me. But geez, if you were to put me in a room with, with an Ikea set of shelves, I guarantee you I would I'd have a sledgehammer at it very quickly uh, before I even go through page one of the instructions because I'm just not good at that. And I still am good at that. Like even genuinely, like during the homeschooling, I was doing second class uh homework with, with, with my child and I was like hold on a minute there now I just have to read this question once more and I'd be so slow at reading I'd say no I definitely think I'm right here and everyone would be like you're not right Rory no I am and and then I'd read it again and I wouldn't and 
that's okay. But years ago, I used to think I was stupid because I just wasn't good at that. And I, and I have a bit of dyslexic and I can't really spell. Uh, but you, how can you learn to spell when you're staring at a wall in, in your primary school, kicked out of class? You know, really, you're not going to learn too much looking at a wall. But for so long in my life, I thought that I was stupid just based off this, this education system, which only suits a certain amount of people. And and that's why, the, again, the LCA was so good for me because it wasn't all about writing. It wasn't all about spelling. It wasn't all about taking in information from a book. It was giving you different topics. And so with all this in mind, I said, well, I'm going to give this comedy a go because, like, I, I, I tried to be an electrician, useless. I tried to work in a call centre, not very good. I tried to work in an insurance company, and I, I, I reckon, from what I hear, I've cost them more money reopening claims than I, I, I closed in Quinn Direct over not having a breeze what was going on and just letting on I did and I just deleting all these emails so uh, I definitely wasn't good at that but Jesus yeah making people laugh that's fine but again I was never told uh, that this this is a possible uh, uh, I suppose dream or a possible uh, life to live so I started at the very bottom and I said well I'm going for this and in 2013 I just set up a blog called Rory Stories and started telling stories about myself and People were enjoying these, and I set up a Facebook page called Rory Stories in 2014, and I started to do sketches on the GEA, like different characters that we can all relate to. And, and, and all of a sudden, this, this this thing blew up for me. Like, And I remember within six to eight months, I had 100,000 followers on Facebook, and I remember my father, who'd be very old school, being like, Jesus, Rory, there's a, there's 100,000 people here that follow you on this Facebook. Do you know all these people here you do? Like, did you go to school with them? And I'm like, yeah, I went to school with 100,000 people. You know, he just wouldn't understand the figures. Like, and But, like, what Jerry Cooney had said to me was happening. I was starting to put my energy into something that I was naturally good at. Like, like, even though, like, I find it easy to do making these little sketches, but to other people, they wouldn't have a clue where to start. And it, it, got, it was like me sitting in, in the middle of, of, of science or business studies back in school, being literally like this, looking around the classroom, not a clue what's going on but this is what I'm good at and this comes natural to me and I enjoyed it and in 2015 I continued making these sketches and and and, and things were moving forward then 2016 and I I was offered to go to um Australia like on a tour like and I was like geez I'm not ready for this at all but sometimes in life you have to just literally get out of your comfort zone and take a deep breath and go I'm just going to do this and um, you know and even though you're terrified and all your body is telling you no no get back into this warm bed don't go out into the cold you just sometimes have to just you know brace the storm and that's what i've done and like no one no one really kind of uh believed that i was going to do what i was going to do everyone thought oh yeah so you get a bit of a year or two out of that but i had a complete tunnel vision and that's something is all need to understand, especially now you're leaving school and going into the real world and various opportunities, is that whatever vision you have for yourself, uh, no one else can see that. Even your best friend or your mother or your father, no one can see that you have to hold on to that vision and that dream and each day work towards it. And that's what I was doing. And yeah, it is difficult. Of course it is. But is it worth it? Oh, my God, absolutely. Like, and after when I went to Australia, did Australia go well for me? Not really. Did I make a show myself? Absolutely. Did people walk out on my show? A hundred percent they did. But did I learn from it? Yes. And do I regret it? No, because it made me stronger character and it made me a um, bit of a thicker skin, basically. And then uh, I decided to leave my job in 2016. And again, everyone thought I was mad, even my mother and father. Jesus, no, don't leave the job. And I said, like, but this is what I want to do with myself. This is what I believe I was put here to do. And and your gut feeling, which is that that feeling of worry, but you want to do something, you need to listen to that feeling. And I know it's scary, trust me, but it is telling you, do it. Like you're, there's there's a connection with you and your soul to just go and do this and 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 don't be afraid, just just get it done. And so I left the job and then 2017 came along. And for me personally, it was a great opportunity to uh to really prove that anything is possible if you if you put your mind to it is when a book company came along and said, you should write a book about the GAA. And I was like, <laughs> what? A book? Uh, hello there. Uh, I'm an LCA student. Uh, I, I have no proper limbs there. I can't spell. I, I actually, I can't really read, to be honest with you. A book? Would you pull the other one? And then I said, no, no, have a think about it. And I went away and I said, geez, imagine if Rory O'Connor wrote a book like that same headbanger who was you know, kicked down most class in school. Imagine he was an, an, an author. I can't even spell author, but it sounds good. Like, 
And I said, right, and I'm going to do this. And I, I, I put my heart and soul into it. And I won't lie, like when I was struggling to write this book and, and, and like if I had hair, I would have pulled it out, put it that way. I had in my head, I want to be that LCA student that people can look at and say, well, if he done it, I can do it. And that's what drove me on. And then after a lot of hard work in 2017, I wrote that book, Roll the Stories Guide to the GA, which amazingly was like, like top 10 bestseller that Christmas and no one could believe it bar me. And I was like, what you mean? Should I know everything about the GA and I know the crack? I, I'll do that now, bother. And yeah, listen, there's no words in this book that you'll find in a Trin Trinity College uh, dialogue or anything like that, but it's very simple, straight down the middle kind of Irish banter. And, you know, then 2018 came along and, you know, you have, unfortunately, the begrudgery of Ireland going, oh, yeah, look at your man there. He wrote a book. Sure, anyone would write a book. Go back to making them stupid stupid videos. And I was like, all right, that's grand. I'm just going to write another book. So, so I wrote another book the following year just to really prove it was possible. And like someone who I personally would have looked up to, Brendan O'Carroll, who, who doesn't live too far away from here, obviously Mrs. Brown's boys and what he done is phenomenal. And kind of, like I say to everyone, like if you don't, you know, if you don't like the comedy, that's fine, but you have to take it, take a breath and realize what, what the man done, like as a one man show. And he, and he endorsed, you know, like the book to me, it has like, um, Hilarious, a wonderful, complicated, uh, I can't even say the word, <laughs> a wonderful complication of all that makes up being Irish and proud of a bravo, Brendan O'Carroll. Like he quoted that in my book, and I was like, oh my God, that, that's that's mad. And again, like here's this LCA shooting, the can't spell that is now a two time best selling author. Go, Jesus Christ, did this, and this is all just belief uh, in your in your own capabilities. And then 2019 came along, and I was given another opportunity to step outside my comfort zone when when Acre Promotion uh, said that you should you should do a tour of Ireland. And I was like, oh, jeez, I don't know about that. And again, that fear kicked in and that that kind of feeling of I don't think I can do this. But some things that, that I use personally, what I encourage you to do is when you face something in life that you feel you can't do it, take a moment to close your eyes and look back on something that you achieved where you had the exact same feeling. I and mean, you all have, there could have been an assignment in your LCA uh, days where you felt, I can't do this, but you just needed encouragement and you'd done it. And 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 then you were, you were saying, why was I so worried about that? That was actually fine. So you need to hold on to that in your heart and say, right, when I reach uh, another uh, another blockage, take a moment, go, look, like you, sometimes in life you basically have to look back and see what you've done to give you the courage to move forward and with that in mind I said yes I'm going to do this tour and one by one all these venues sold out including Vicar Street I stood in front of a fun house in Vicar Street in 2019 telling stories being the same person I was in school but now doing it for a living like and people were enjoying these and I remember taking a moment to myself and saying Six years ago, I felt I had nothing to live for. I felt that I was useless and worthless. And here I am doing what I've always dreamed of doing, you know. And that's why, you know, 2020 came along and I was given an opportunity to tell my story, which, which is Rory's story. And it's just an honest account of my life. But there's two pages that I love showing all students um, because I just think it's a really good example that the person you are today doesn't necessarily have to be the person you are tomorrow, right? And here's the example here. So this is two letters from uh, my old secondary school, uh, Ashburn Community School. And one letter here is dated, uh, let me see again, it's the 23rd of March 2001, which is 20 years ago, imagine. And it's a, a letter suspending me from school. One of dozens of letters that my mother has at home, Rory's a disaster, he's no attention span, we don't know what to do with him, et cetera, et cetera. That's fine, that's okay. But then you have this letter here, which is dated the uh, 17th of January 2020 last year. And it's a letter from the current principal inviting me back to the school to speak to the students as kind of a, a role model or an ambassador for the school or a success story. You know, the same role model that sat outside the principal's office on this page, uh, you know, 16, 17 years previous, uh, written off as as, as no good. Um, and I just like showing these because, you know, you might be sitting there now and, um, you know, going, well, I, I'm not good in school, so I'm never going to uh, have a good job or have a good uh, house or have, have money. Yes, you will. like, um, But what you have to do is, is a few things. One is uh, don't be afraid to fail. Whatever you, whatever you do in life, go at it 100% and, and, and don't listen to negativity. Unfortunately, in Ireland, it's a difficult place to chase your dreams, but hopefully your generation will change that. Be happy for each other. Um, and get out of your comfort zone as much as possible. If you're if you're feeling like, oh, nothing can go wrong here, 
nothing, nothing will go right there either. So if you if you do what you've always done, you'll get you what you've always got. Basically, like that's the way life is, and that's why, you know, that's why I'm here to talk to you today to tell you that like. Don't use LCA as an excuse to tell yourself that you're not good enough for anything because you are. Listen, there's so many people that done the Lehman set, got 600 points, and they're not happy with, what, with their life. They're not happy with what they're doing. So everyone balances out. Even though you think your friend that got 600 points in the Lehman set is going to go on to take over the world, and here's you with LCA, and you might get into any of these big colleges. Trust me, by the time you was at 23 or 4 years of age, everyone balances out. And the key to it is believing in yourself, believing in your ability and, and backing yourself. When you have an opportunity to do something you want to do, trust your heart, trust your gut feeling and go for it. And, and, and when you are struggling, honest to God, think, think of my story. Like I am holding three bestselling books in my hand and I can't spell. Like, so don't try and tell me that you can't do something that, 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 that puts fear into because I'm telling you here now you can um, and like I said to you, I had LCA students in my mind writing that first book on I want, because when I was doing LCA, I didn't have anyone to look to and say, Jesus, well, your man done LCA and he done all right. I just didn't have anyone like that. So that's why you do like, you know, and I, I'm proud of being that person that done the LCA and, 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 and made like, like. I'm doing well for myself and I've only started like, you know, because it's getting over the first few humps. And once you realise I'm good at this and, and I work really hard. Well then sky's the limit. There's nothing that there's nothing that you can't achieve if you put your mind to it. That is an absolute fact, you know. So um listen, that that's pretty much all from for me uh, for today. So I suppose like first of all, I I, I want to obviously congratulate uh, all the winners. Um, you know, fair play to you. Like that's a nice achievement to have. Um, I don't think I got any <laughs> any awards myself after the LCA, but uh, but I have a bit of paper somewhere in the mother's house that 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 has my. Um, I think I got a distinction if that's what it was. Maybe I didn't, but I'm just going to say I did because uh, the teachers I got on all right with the teachers, but. Uh, yeah, so listen, uh, the, ver the very best look to you is all going forward. And like I said to you, um, limitations are only in your mind. Just remember that, that these are all super intelligent in different ways. And like myself, uh, for a good few years, school wasn't able for you to, to blossom because you struggled. I struggled in school probably more than a lot of you. And like I said, I'm doing okay myself. So it's a big world out there and everyone is gifted in different ways and there's something out there for you, but you have to be winning to get outside your comfort zone. You're going to fail at things. I failed at a lot of things before I found Rory Stories. I still fail at certain things I do, whether it be bad videos or bad comedy shows. That's part of life. Not everything's going to be up. You're going to have to experience some down, you know. Um, but above all, just be happy with yourselves. And, um, you know, if you are struggling with your mental health, don't be afraid to talk. It is OK not to feel OK. I have up and down days uh, and, and I've no problem admitting that. But I, I, I play on, you know, and I talk to people when I'm feeling low and I exercise on a regular basis and I just mind myself. That's what you got to do, you know. So um, listen, again, th thanks very much uh, for having me. And like I said, I, I wish you all the very best of luck and enjoy the summer. Uh, and I want to see some of you doing some incredible things uh, over the next few years because I know he's, each and every one of you are capable of doing. All right. So, listen, thanks very much anyway. Cheers. Yeah. Well Thank you, Rory, from the Leaving Sort Applied National Association. Thank you, Sabrina, for getting in touch with, with Rory. Um, I just want to say that was an inspirational story from, from you um, about how difficult education can be, how difficult life can be. And the positive thing that Leaving Sort Applied can give to people in, in, in a learning experience and to launch their life and, and for a chance of success. So that was great. Thank you. Yeah, no bother. Cheers. I'll let you go and enjoy the rest of the afternoon. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Rory.